So it may seem that we've learned two different methods for dividing fractions. Uh, on the one hand, we learned a, what we are calling a multiply by the reciprocal, really what we should call multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor method. And again, I apologize for the letters here, but the, we're going to use algebra just to concisely convey these rules. Uh, a multiply by the reciprocal method might be if we want to divide A over B, the fraction A over B, divided by the fraction C over D, we would multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor, so we would take the fraction A over B and we multiply by D over C. On the other hand, we just learned a common denominator method which tells us, we, first of all, we can't divide fractions unless we have a common denominator, and secondly, it tells us how to do so when we do have a common denominator. So if we have a common denominator of B and we have the fraction A over B divided by the fraction C over B, then a valid way of dividing these fractions is to divide straight across the top and obtain a fraction A over C as our answer. Okay? Now, if these, if you, obtain, if you apply both of these procedures to an individual problem and you got different answers, then these would be useless procedures. Right? Or at least one of them would be useless because we, how, how would we pick which one is correct? So it turns out, of course, that these are equivalent to one another. They're mathematically equivalent. So if you are going to teach multiply by the reciprocal and you're not going to worry about the common denominator method, then you certainly don't need to bother showing that these two techniques are equivalent to one another. However, if you're going to teach the common denominator method, we did mention that there's, a little, there's an extra step in computation involved in the common denominator method, that is finding that original common denominator. So if you want to illustrate fraction division with the common denominator method, but then eventually get your students to see that multiplying by the reciprocal is in fact faster computationally, one thing you can do is show students that the two methods are indeed equivalent to one another. Okay? Now, normally we would do this algebraically by using A's, B's, C's, and D's, but I'm going to illustrate this with actual numbers. So, suppose we wanted to divide 2 thirds divided by 5 eighths, but we, let's say, say, let's say we're going to do this with the common denominator method. Let's say we've taught our students common denominator method. The goal of this illustration is to show us that if we use the common denominator method and run it all the way through, we are actually going to get the multiply by the reciprocal method coming out of it. What we're going to show is that the common denominator method is going to reduce in the computation two-thirds multiplied by eight-fifths. Okay. So let's just carry out the process. Let's suppose that we knew, we know that we need a common denominator to carry out this division. The common denominator in this case, excuse me, would be 24. And I'm not going to do any computations. I'm just going to write out the, what the arithmetic would be. And you'll see why we're going to do this here in a second. So our common denominator would be 24. So we would have to take 2 thirds and multiply by 8 over 8. And we would need to take our 5 eighths and multiply by 3 over 3. <clears throat> and this first step obtains a common denominator. I know you, want to, you need to fight the urge to actually multiply this out and write 1624s and multiply this out and write 1524s. It's going to be more illustrative if we keep it like this. Now, our common denominator method tells us that once we have common denominators, the correct procedure is to divide straight across the top. So that 2 times 8 divided by 3 times 8, that fraction divided by 3 times 5 over 3 times 8, is equivalent to 2 times 8 over 3 times 5. Because again, remember, the common denominator method of dividing fractions tells us once we have the common denominator, and in this case we have a common denominator of 3 times 8, then we just divide across the top. So again, we see that our answer is 2 times 8 over 3 times 5. And again, you know, let's fight that urge for a little while longer not to multiply this out. What we can notice here is that through our rule for multiplication of fractions, 2 times 8 over 3 times 5 is equivalent to 2 thirds times 8 fifths. So what we've seen, what this board illustrates, is that if we start with the division problem 2 thirds divided by 5 eighths, and we solve that problem with our common denominator method, the answer that comes out is 2 thirds times 8 fifths. Okay? So one way of handling fraction division, one way, 
is to motivate, because it's very easy to motivate the common denominator method with pictures. We can motivate the common denominator with me method with pictures, and then we can give an explanation like this that illustrates that the common denominator method is actually equivalent to multiplying by the reciprocal of the divisor. And then your students can see that and notice that multiplying by the reciprocal of the divisor is faster, and then latch onto that. 